we have to turn back the clock to 10 years ago in order for me to tell you about a truly horrific thing that happened to a friend of mine. That friend's name is Genji, and he and I were attending the same college at the time. One day in school, Ichika, a girl whom we had econ class with, well, she asked Genji out on a date and got rejected on the spot. Ichika had tears in her eyes before she left. She was notably upset and embarrassed of the situation. I asked Genji why he rejected her and he told me something totally unexpected. Turns out, Genji actually liked her. He rejected her because of his own personal issues that he was dealing with at the time. It had nothing to do with Ichika. To make long story short, Genji had a girlfriend in high school. That girlfriend cheated on him with his best friend not long before graduation. But wait, things get worse. That ex-girlfriend got pregnant with his best friend's baby. She wanted to have the baby but not the best friend. Tragically, the ex-girlfriend ended up committing suicide 4 months into the pregnancy. Genji developed a healthy fear of trusting others after what happened with his ex and also his former best friend. He was especially fearful of getting involved in a new romantic relationship. Ichika though was surprisingly persistent if anything. The way she expressed her feelings was cute in the beginning. She would drop notes on Genji's desk and give him small gifts just randomly. With the continued rejections however, she became more aggressive in her approach and worryingly obsessive of Genji. For example, she once slapped the face of Hina, a classmate of ours, merely for the reason that she smiled while talking to Genji. Ichika also bought Genji a watch that had the price tag equivalent to a decent used car. Genji of course refused the gift. I'm not a superstitious person, but looking back, I do wonder if Genji was somehow cursed. Because here's the thing, Ichika hung herself in a room about a year after the first time she asked Genji out on a date. Genji was later investigated by the police and as well as the campus security because of a note Ichika kept in her pants pocket. The note read, I'll wait for you in the eternity that is the afterlife. We'll be together forever in due time. It didn't take too long for Genji to be cleared of all suspicions. I mean, it's not like there was any to begin with. I think the investigation was more of a formality due to Ichika's note implicating Genji indirectly for the reason of her suicide. Nonetheless, Ichika's death had a huge impact on Genji. He first stopped coming to school and then I heard he locked himself in his room after the investigation had concluded. I went to his place several times but he refused to even acknowledge that he was in his room. He was trying to avoid the entire world. A few weeks passed when Genji had called me for the first time since the incident. What I can tell you about the conversation is that there was none. I couldn't make sense of what Genji was saying. All I could understand was that he was being punished and that he deserved all the pain that she was inflicting on him. Yeah, he said she was inflicting. She. Later on the same day, I met Genji in person and he looked like he had been through hell. Right away, you could tell he had lost a lot of weight. Genji literally looked like a skeleton with a thin layer of skin covering his insides. To say that he looked terrible would be a major understatement. I didn't get to speak to him for too long. He told me that he wanted to see me for one last time and that he missed being able to live like a normal person. He wished that he could go back to his old life for just one day. That was his only wish. I spoke to Genji's mom later that night. I advised her to keep an eye on him for the time being as I explained to her the things he had told me earlier in the day. All signs pointed to him attempting a suicide. He couldn't have been clearer of his intention. Genji was found deceased in his room the next day. They said he had his hands wrapped around his neck as though he was choking himself. He did die from asphyxiation but I could not believe how one could strangle himself to death. Think about it, you can't even stab yourself with a fork if you tried. How in the world do you strangle yourself to death with your own hands? 
That's impossible. Think about the amount of force that's required to first restrict the airflow that moves through your neck. Then imagine exerting the same or greater force on your neck as you slowly starve yourself of oxygen. Even if you could do that, you will pass out before dying. More importantly though, it's just not humanly possible to be done to begin with. There definitely had to be more to Genji's death than a plain suicide. Everyone knew that but no one wanted to speak of the other possibility. I forget about Genji for many years until I drove by his place this morning. I have many good memories of Genji but sadly all I remember of him is the tragic ending of his life. Genji was a good guy and he had done no wrong to either his ex-girlfriend or Ichika. For that I really hope he's in a better place. Rest in peace my friend.